May the spirit of the living God Almighty give you ears to hear. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. along with my beautiful wife, Sister Glorious Liberty. We thank you. We thank the Lord for this um, opportunity to minister the word of God. And may his spirit in, through us encourage you to uh, have understanding and the adversities of this life we especially born again christians we have adversities we have things that we deal with in our minds and so we want to encourage and exhort and allow the holy spirit to speak through us so you can be encouraged and have the weapons the spiritual weapons of warfare and know how to use them and that is very critical in your life for anyone mm -hmm. and so we were just, me and my wife was meditating on the things of the battlefield of your mind. And one of the scriptures that stood out to us, well, well, me first, and I didn't have the scripture memorized. I normally love to memorize scripture so I, because I like to, I like to have it engraved in my heart. So, especially in prayer, when we deal with uh, spiritual warfare and the Spirit of the Lord puts it on our hearts for the Word of God to, to fight the battle. Even though the Lord fights our battles, we have to be fully armed in His armor, spiritually, the whole armor of God. And I saw some reels from our pastor, me and my wife's pastor. He quoted 2 Corinthians 10. Then when I saw my wife do a reel, I'm like, man, she know that scripture too? Let me go ahead and memorize that. <laughs> and so I meditated on it and I, and I memorized it. I'm like, wow. And the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord opened doors, opened uh, doors through that scripture. Like, wow, this is powerful to take thoughts captive and bring it into the captivity of Christ Jesus. And, you know, having it in a readiness. And that is so much power. It's so powerful in that word that it just brought me joy that's very important for the kingdom of god and those who are born again the kingdom of god is not meat or drink but peace righteousness and joy in the holy ghost yes the dangers of the battle of the mind is that as human beings our minds are always going mm -hmm. you and i we can't even calculate the amount of thoughts that you and i go through a day and so the dangers of that is not being able to control our thoughts, not being able to take our thoughts captive. Right. When we are people who we let our minds go or roam, I heard it said this way that an idle mind is the devil's yes. playground. And so if I'm yes. just allowing anything to enter my mind and I'm just allowing anything to influence me and cause me to feel these types of ways and cause me to act out on those emotions that I'm going to find myself in some dark places. Mm -hmm. This is why you have people battling with depression. Yes. This is why you have people battling with anxiety and paranoia and so insomnia. They, they can't sleep. It all starts in the mind. It stems from the heart, mm -hmm. but it starts in the mind. When you get thoughts, when thoughts enter your mind and you don't address them, then those thoughts can be grow and, turn, and they can turn into something else. I remember mm -hmm. before I got saved, I was a person and... I'm still overcoming different areas now, but I'm a person. Mm -hmm. My mind is always going. And it doesn't help when you're a visual person, meaning I can read something and my mind will make a whole picture out of it. And so the dangers of that is you taking in things through your eye gates and that affecting your mind. And that also can affect your beliefs. This is why you have so many people who they can't come to God because of their beliefs, mm -hmm. because of what they think. The word of God says that as a man thinks, so, so is he. Is. And so if I think that God can't deliver me from smoking cigarette, if I think that God can't deliver me from nicotine, if I think that God can't deliver me from masturbation or from pornography, because I've seen other people fail, right. those who profess to be believers, I've seen them fail. I've seen this pastor, I went to his church, he was stealing from the offering. And so I've seen people fail. And so that messed up my thoughts. Mm. That messed up the way I think about God. I don't believe that God is real. You, maybe you have, but maybe you once did before. You know, maybe you felt like, you know, I believe that God was once real until I was raped or until I lost my job, until I lost my wife or until I lost my husband, until I lost my child 
whatever the case was for you, it uh, it it the experience that you went through it affected the way you think about mm -hmm. life. Many right. people believe that bad things shouldn't happen to good people. If I'm a person, if I believe that, then when I see things happening to what I believe is good, if I believe this person is good and bad things are happening to them, that's going to affect my thoughts. Right. That's going to affect the way I think about life and what I believe about God. God is good. God is love. Yes. But God is also just. What that means is God, whenever, wherever God sees fit, God is going to bring consequences. Right. God is going to bring judgment. He's going to bring affliction. But if I'm a person based off experience, my trends of thoughts tell me life should be this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like bad people should suffer and I feel like good people, life should just be easy for them. And so when I see that fail, when I see the concept of humanity fall, meaning I feel like, you know, all the people that murder that rape, that still, those types of people should be locked away. But if people are committing adultery on their wives, if people are molesting little children, if people are lying on their taxes and lying on housing authority, if people are doing these types of things, I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know, and sometimes you have people who consider themselves as good because, you know, they may say things like, well, I don't, I don't think I'm a bad person. I don't, I don't believe I'm a bad person. A lot of eyes. Why? Because, you know, I, I don't rape, you know, I don't rape, I don't kill, I don't steal, you know, I masturbate, I don't see nothing wrong with that, I smoke a little marijuana, I don't see nothing wrong with that, I watch TV shows filled with cursing mm -hmm. and violence, I don't see anything wrong with that, and so you can't tell me that I'm a bad person, matter of fact, I don't believe that God sees me as a bad person, I know that God loves me, God knows my heart, and so that way of thinking, that can cause you to be away from God for all eternity, your way of thinking, your train of thought. And this is why we have to get to a place where we see things. Mm -hmm. The way we see things, we need the mind of Christ to see things. Yes. The only way I'm going to see life for what it really is, is by taking on the mind of Christ. Why I need the mind of Christ? Because my natural way of thinking is corrupt. My natural way of thinking is carnal. No, when I, when I see things in life, I'm going to see it from a perverted way. But if I have the mind of Christ, then he's going to begin to unlock some things within my mind. He's going to begin to reveal some deep parts of who I really am. Right. He's going to begin to reveal the parts of me that are bad. And now I'm going to begin to see things from the way that he see, sees things. You know, like I said, before I got saved, there were so many different things that I didn't know was bad. Like what? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know it was wrong to overeat. Like I didn't know it was wrong, you know, to talk about people behind their back. Well, gossip, as they call it, you know, we can, we can kind of make it pretty and dress it up, but there were just certain things that I didn't realize was sin before God. It wasn't right. until I took on his mindset and yes. we need the mind of Christ so that we can see the world from his point of view. Otherwise we're going to be calling good, bad and bad, good. And so we, we need the mind of Christ. We need yes. our mind. Yes. As I was looking at in Romans 12, chapter two, mm -hmm. it says, and be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so we grow up in a society where we are taught the wrong things about going about life. Meaning if this person crosses boundaries, if this person crosses lines, if this person hurts me, I can cut them off. They call it cutthroat. You know, if this person decides that they never want to forgive me, then I don't have to pursue chasing after them. We can go our separate ways. If this person cheats on me, I can leave this relationship and go and find another. You know, if this person want to be that way, I can be this way. And so we learn how to fight evil with evil and mm -hmm. eye for eye. We, we, we've learned to be wicked people. We've learned to think a certain way. Society has taught us that nobody's perfect. And so when you fail, you don't have to put forth effort to try and be good or be better. Right. Listen, we all fail. And so do the, do the basic minimum. Do what's expected of you. If you succeed, that's good. If you don't, it's fine. Nobody is perfect. We all make mistakes. Right. And so I had to un, un, unlearn those things. I had to unlearn it because learning that you think a certain way. Meaning when I fail, I just have a pity party. But now being in the Lord, I can't have a pity party. I have to address some thoughts. Okay, right. you failed. Are you going to allow self-condemnation to, to eat you up? Right. Because when we do, then we find ourselves, instead of going to God, we drift away from God because of self-condemnation. Because mm -hmm. the world has taught us 
the word has taught us that, you know, it's okay to be depressed. It's okay to be sad. Here's some pills. Call this 1-800 number. Call this hotline. Go see that therapist. It's okay. It's normal. Although you have devils in your mind, they tell you that, that it's normal. It's, it's okay. Self-abuse, cutting yourself with a blade, putting a liner to your skin, starving yourself, making yourself throw up. They tell you that this is normal. Although you hear voices in your mind, you hear the enemy speaking in your ears. They're going to tell you that this is normal. And so having the mind of Christ, I know that, no, that's, that's not normal. The devil is a liar. And so I have to constantly rebuke and address some things. Now, I'm not saying that that's my story as far as I hear thoughts or I've heard thoughts. What I'm saying is there were things that I've learned in the world that I had to unlearn and that I had to now address. Mm -hmm. See, the people in the world, they don't know anything about addressing any thoughts because to them, that's normal. We all mm -hmm. have thoughts, mm -hmm. you know? You know, if you if you are a man and you see a fine woman with some curves walk by, then you look at her. I mean, if you don't, you're gay, right? right. You know, if you don't, you're, you're gay. And so, but right. having the mind of Christ, you have to have control over your mind. One of the things is this, uh, and the beginning of my conversion, I'm going to just give this short testimony. Okay, when I was in the world. Mm -hmm. You have your own way of thinking, and the word God describes that as leaning to your own understanding. And to begin uh, the steps of renewing your mind, mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love what it says in Psalms 19. It says this. It says, the testimony, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul and the testimony of the Lord making the wise, the simple. So to acknowledge that your mind, you have thoughts from your old nature, your old nature, the old man has mm -hmm. old way of thinking mm -hmm. and you may enjoy sports or you may enjoy the entertainment or sitcoms or enjoying the, what the world enjoys and what the world sees fit. And you may uh, enjoy or be entertained by the media mm -hmm. and what comes on that promotes fear or uh, having a, 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 what's the word, paranoia, a mm -hmm. paranoia. And now you come to Christ and you still have these things in your mind. Like when I first got saved, the, the first thing that got delivered from me was profanity. And I used to, I'm not going to even mention that. Mm -hmm. What I used to do. And so old things have been passed away by the washing of the blood of Jesus and the washing of his spirit in with fire. Mm -hmm. He made me a new creature. And that's what described in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So a new creature lives a different way. Yes. How we live is unto God in holiness and obedience and perfection. Mm -hmm. He commanded you and I. And I'm talking to the believers, those who want to spend forever with God. He commands you and I to be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. And that perfected way of living is having a renewed mind, meditating on it day and night that you may be a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in due season. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Philippians 4, now the new nature, the new uh, creature in Christ Jesus you have some spiritual weapons, which was described in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to get into that a little bit later in this video too. But one of the uh, spiritual weapons is what Paul said in uh, Philippians 4. Uh, this is a, per a, a, a good way by the Spirit of God through Paul on what to meditate on. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, yes. Philippians Chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, which my some, the thing my wife mentioned, just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, meditate on these things. That looks like committing your works to God so that your thoughts be established. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts be established when you 
Meditate on the things that are just. What is just? My wife just described it. When you come to Christ, when you are baptized in the Spirit, God, by Christ Jesus, you are justified by the Father. So you, mm -hmm. you think on that. You think, I'll be at work and in a heavy atmosphere and not even being bothered by the atmosphere because I'm at a level of my anointing that God has blessed me with to just think on the testimonies of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. The justification, the justification, what he did for you and I on that tree 2,000 years ago. The just, whatever things are just, whatever things are honest. Honest sounds like truth. Renouncing the things of hidden dishonesties in your mind. Mm -hmm. In your mind, you have things in your heart, the conditions of your heart that you that you need to deal with and confront. That looks like taking thoughts cap into captivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have thoughts in your heart. You have thoughts in your mind. Jesus described that. Whatsoever things are pure, what Jesus calls uh, the pure in heart blessed. Those blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So in, in the presence of God, you renounce the hidden things of dishonesty in your mind. You, Lord, I had this thought, this bad thought, and I know it offended you. You have to be transparent with the Lord. Yeah. I know it offended you, and I, I know it offended the person because I said this. Or I thought that, even in your, your hidden things of dishonesty, you confront it. Lord, this is wrong. You are holy. You are right. Mm -hmm. I confront mm -hmm. it and I renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Whatsoever things are pure, uh, whatsoever things are lovely. What, what is lovely? What is things that are beautiful? Acknowledging God and his creation. Acknowledging what he has done. He created everything beautiful in his time. And he has set the world in their hearts so that no man knows the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. And he is indeed the beginning of the end. And, and the end. And so when I first got converted, again, part of my testimony, my first day of being born again, I acknowledged that, man, the trees look greener. The mm -hmm. sky looks bluer. And I'm just observing God's creation like, wow, he is holy. I'm thinking on these things. This is overshadowed. This is obedience being fulfilled in your mind to revenge disobedience that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so good report. What sort of things are good report? You think of a praise report. You know, you testimonies. pray. Testimonies. Right. And then you, you know, answer prayer. Answer prayer is a good report. And if there be any virtue, I mean, whatever things are good in the eyes of the Lord, that, that is a part of his attributes. And if there be any praise, praises to the Lord, think on these things, meditate on these things. These are spiritual weapons of warfare. These are spiritual weapons of warfare. And so I just want to point that out because my wife went to Romans 12 and described that. And there are many different scriptures, many different uh, testimonies in mm -hmm. the word of God and how to overcome the battlefield of your mind. Yeah, so everything that we're we're sharing, the scriptures, um, the different verses, like these are all weapons because some people may be asking, well, how do I control my thoughts? Because mm -hmm. I used to have that question because like I said, I was a person my thoughts went all over the place and I likewise me too. I enjoyed them and that's because I really didn't understand that they were wrong, that they were bad. Mm -hmm. And so I always had the question, but how do I control a mind that's going at the rapid speed of like right. fifty miles per mm -hmm. hour because my mind went and it shifted and it, it would just it would just grow into something bigger. And so the word of God, that's one of your most powerful weapons. The word of God in your mouth. Yes. The word of God in your mouth. And so that means you declaring, making declarations yes. like how it is in 2 Corinthians 10. So we walk in the flesh, meaning we are in physical bodies, but we do not war after the flesh. And we know this based on Ephesians 6. And so it says that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Like our weapons, I'm not going to go and put a gun to my head and command mm -hmm. my thoughts to leave. I'm not going to put a knife to my head. Like. Cool. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And so because what enters my mind um, is spiritual, a lot of the thoughts come from just the things in our world, like what's happening around us, what we saw on TV, mm -hmm. who, we in, who we interacted with, who we encountered. I have to use a spiritual weapon to attack these thoughts. 
I cannot go and put, like I said, a screwdriver or a knife and try to remove the thoughts. No, I need a spiritual weapon because our yes. weapons, they are not carnal. They are not man-made. They are not of this world. They are not earthly. And so it says, so through, through, through our weapons of warfare, we have to do this through through the power of God, through yes. the pulling down of strong holes. These are things that govern your mind. Yes. These are like generational curses. These are cycles. These are beliefs in different ways that you think about life. There may, they may, there may be a strong um, generational curse of unbelief on your life, on your family line. You may not even know it. It may be hard for you to believe in the truth. It may be hard for you to believe in God. That's a stronghold. You have to address that. You have to confront that. You cannot be okay with the enemy controlling your thoughts and him doing what he wants, making you believe that you are this, making, making you believe that you are something that you're not, making you believe that God accepts you in your state of condition right. when you have to be converted. As he said, the old things are passed away. Behold, you are made new. And so because you are made new, you got to think newly. Yes. What you once believed was okay. It's According to the word of God, if God says that it is something different, then you got to be in agreement with that. And so your mind, and you have to get your mind to come in alignment with the word of God. Yes. You have to get your mind to agree. When my mind starts acting up, that means I need to repent about something or I need to cast these thoughts down because if I don't, then they're going to turn into something else. And then... I'm going to find myself going back in my mind. You know, people, they back, people backslide in their minds before they backslide right. in the physical. And so it says this in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. All the imaginations of your mind. Me, I used to live in this fantasy world in my mind where, you know, you know, I, I enjoyed the unicorns and I enjoyed the um, stuff like Harry Potter and and the Chronicles of Narnia, like I, I enjoyed those mystical things. And so my mind was filled with those things. Like I enjoyed the cartoon because it would take my mind off into something else. But really the enemy was attacking my mind. He was attacking my thoughts and he was attack, attacking my beliefs of who I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And so I had to cast down some things. Yes. Sometimes you're going to have to rebuke and renounce some things yes. in your mind. Some things are going to go and come back and you got to address it again. Yeah. You got to cast it down again. And you have to bring everything in, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yes. My thoughts line up in the name of Jesus. Yes. Line up according to the word of God in the name of Jesus. I command you to. Right now, I cast every thought right now of lust, of perversion, of unbelief, of doubt, of lust. I cast it down right now. I arrest you thoughts. Right. You have to talk to your thoughts. You have to talk to your flesh because you need freedom in your mind. You can't be in bondage to your own thoughts. Some people won't even leave the house because they have thoughts of something's going to get them when they leave because of the spirit right. of paranoia. Right. The enemy has made them captive in their own homes. They're afraid to leave or they're, they're afraid to drive. They've been in multiple car accidents and so that's caused fear in their lives and so they won't even leave because of fear of getting in a car accident. Fear of something going you know, out to get them. You cannot be a slave to your own thoughts. You've got to address the thoughts mm -hmm. with the power of God that he's given you with his word. No, you have power to address these thoughts mm -hmm. and you need that so that you can be free. Because if you think that you can't be free, if you think that something is out to get you, if you think you can't be forgiven, if you think that the sin you committed was just too much for God, then you're going to stay there and you won't be free. And then you're going to be a person that has gone so far off that you're lunatic. And right. devils are going to fill your life. And you're going to be like the people that you see up and down the street walking, pushing carts, picking up cans, talking to themselves. Those people are dealing with battles in their minds and in their hearts. We see them. Some people laugh at them. But these people are bound by devils. You know, they're not crazy per se where they need medication, but they need deliverance. Mm -hmm. They need true freedom. Yes. Somewhere along the line, they had thoughts that told them, Man, hey, I'm this way. I'm a bum. I'm nothing. I'll never amount to anything because this person spoke it over me. And so I believed it. I felt in this area where I was an ex-veteran and I got on drugs and I got messed up. I'll never amount to anything. And so they stayed in that condition. Yeah. If you think a certain way for, for so long, you'll start believing that. Which is why it's so easy now to tell children about anything now and then. You can tell Billy 
Billy, you are a girl. You can tell Jasmine she is a boy. You can tell this, this little boy he's Batman. He's Superman. Santa loves him. When you lose a tooth, the tooth fairy is going to come and give you money. The Easter Bunny is going to wait for you. You can tell them anything because of their minds. Mm -hmm. They're young. They're gullible. They're, e they're easily shaped. Mm -hmm. You can easily shape their minds to believing something. This is why I heard it said that with, with an elephant, and I hate to use an elephant because I know they're not humans, but you might have heard this too. The elephant starting off being small but chained until he's big and the chains are loose from him. He don't even know that he's free. That's how we can be sometimes wow. when our minds are just open to all types of things. The things that you watch on TV, the things that you listen to on the radio, the people that you encounter. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can be in bondage and not even know that you're in bondage. And the Lord is making freedom available to you, but you don't even realize that it's there. Because of your thoughts. Right. Your thoughts. Thoughts that you've taken on since you were little. Right. Some of us right. had childhood, childhood imaginary friends because we thought it was okay to, to let our imagination run. Mm -hmm. You know, I was told that when I was younger, you know, let your imagination run. And then you, you your parents didn't care at the fact that you had an imaginary friend that was an unclean spirit. My child better not ever. No, 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 no. All y'all finna get out this house right now. You Jesus need to repent. Son. And this spirit has to go in the Jesus name of son. Jesus. We don't do imaginary friends. So even with my son, I have to teach him, hey, that thought did not come from God because we get thoughts from God, the spirit of God. We get thoughts from ourselves, what we entertain, what we take right. in. And we get thoughts from the enemy and we need to be able to identify where these thoughts are coming from. Mm -hmm. Because some people can't even hear the voice of God right now because they're hearing other voices, but they don't know how to distinguish the difference. Right. This is why you have people who can kill someone and say, God told me to do it. <laughs> like what's going on in your mind? The voice of God will never tell you to do that. that. That makes me think of Cain and Abel, how Cain got offended because the Lord chose Abel uh, offering. offering yeah. And so the Lord warned, firmly warned him, in, lo in love warned him, if you do well, then you'll be you accepted. You'll be accepted. Yeah. And so did Cain let go of what was going on or the offense? Mm -hmm. No. All this was in the conditions of his heart. He you know didn't he let had it go. Thoughts. You know he, he had thoughts. Thought. Everyone he has thought. thoughts. God gave you a conscience. Mm -hmm. So God said, yeah, you, you know, sin is sin lies at the mm -hmm. door and waiting to pounce. So he didn't he didn't choose the instructions of the Lord. He mm -hmm. reacted off the thoughts of his heart, which yeah. was hatred, return it to murder. Jesus warns about man. that. An entitlement, mm -hmm. right? And so he murdered his, he's the world's first murderer. He murdered his brother. So you have that. One of my favorite videos from my pastor is, it was one of his old videos, is called Pleading the Blood of Jesus. Now, for the believer who is born again, my pastor described this in, um, in his video. He said, you know, when you battle, when you deal with thoughts, mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus is against you, lust. The mm, blood of Jesus yes, is against you. With your Idolatry. Yes, with your mouth. Making a declaration. Mm -hmm. And I, ever since then, I think that was in 2012, 2000, 2011. 2011. And since then, I declared that I made that every, every thought that offends God or exalts itself against his knowledge mm -hmm. and his holiness, the blood of Jesus is against you, sports entertainment. Yes. The yes. blood of Jesus is against you, Secular music, mm -hmm. I come old against you. The old music, and yeah. Feelings and familiar spirits. Right, right. And so that was a beautiful declaration that, my past, that I learned from my pastor. And it's in the Word of God because mm -hmm. the Word of God is true from Genesis to Revelation. And so, but how do you, from, okay, from the old nature, how does that enter your mind? We described it, but Jesus described this too. He said this in Matthew 6 the light of the body is the eye. So, what that means is this, your eye is, the, is, an, is a gate mm -hmm. to your soul. Mm -hmm. What you let in, you, have, you let in and it either, it either def, uh, defiles or pollutes or it can be beneficial to the glory of God. So the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, which I describe in most of my videos, if your eye be single, meaning you have two eyes, you see one. Your eye is single. Your whole body will be full of light. So if your eyes focus on the things of God, which is already mentioned of Philippians 4 and 8, meditating on the things that are just, noble, true, praiseworthy, 
uh, honest, good report, and if any kind of praise, any kind of virtue, meditate on those things. Your eye is single, focus on the things of God. You, 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 you are meditating on his word and your whole body will be full of light. We are the children of light. We are children of the day. And so we represent Christ Jesus. We confront the things that God hates. Where God talks about this in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You fear the Lord, you hate evil. God hates evil. Pride and arrogance see. Pride and arrogance is of the world. And if you may not notice that you may, if you're prideful in your heart, you may not know, okay, what is pride? Pride is what Lucifer did in heaven that got him kicked out. And so those thoughts was in Lucifer's heart because it says that in Isaiah 14. These things that the Lord saw in his heart, mm -hmm. the five I wills, I will ascend up to the most high. I, I need to memorize that, I, <laughs> that scripture because it's the five I wills. I know that. So that describes pride and you confront pride. Pride exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And a lot of things that can promote pride in your heart of what you see, because again, the light of the body is the eye. Mm -hmm. And then it says this, Jesus, he says, that if your eye be uh, of darkness, I'm paraphrasing, I be of darkness and your whole body be full of darkness. But if your eye is full of light, if your I be single full of um, how does it go? <laughs> I be single full of light, but um, I'm going to right now. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Matthew six. Therefore, take no, no, go back right here. Verse okay, verse twenty three of Matthew six. But if your eye be evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore. The light that is in you be darkness, meaning if you can't tell what is evil and good, light and darkness, Jesus says, how great is that darkness? Mm -hmm. And you don't ask that with a question. You don't even ask it. He says it with an <laughs> exclamation point. How great is that darkness? So you can't tell evil from good. You are still in bondage and your sin will find you out because you are not confronting the thoughts. You may, you, you know, you may be a minister of the gospel or proclaim minister of the gospel online, but you have an image of the world. You look evil. And how can you say that, Brother Joseph? Well, God, God gives you discretion. God gives you godly discretion to judge rightly. And that's what that means. So you see a person or individual or a false prophet or teacher or professed Christians and that has the traditions of men, you see it on them. They bodies are full of darkness, but they can't tell light from darkness. And the word of God describes light, uh, darkness does not comprehend light. So you meditate on the things of, that are good, just noble, praiseworthy, and good report. These again are your spiritual weapons. So the good news, the testimony of Christ Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We have to operate in his spirit, walk in the obedience, let our eye be single so that our whole bodies be full of light. Yeah, I was saying there's one of the things that help to eliminate the the thoughts that are evil, the thoughts that are not good is like you said, being mindful of what you set before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Being mindful of what you take in. Listen, if your right hand offend you, you may need to cut it off. Some of us had to go on our social media pages and unfollow some unfollow people. Some Why? Because I don't want to risk being exposed to what you agree with, Absolutely. what you like, and what you do. Because you may not see your, you may not see your reason as to why you did with what you did with. Like you may not understand. Right. But for us, we understand the risk that is out there with just scrolling. Because just seeing something so mm -hmm. small on Facebook can open you up to something so big, really right. quick, real fast. And so if it's your right eye, you might need to pluck it out, whatever it is for you to eliminate. And if you're a person, you like the news, you keep on the news 24-7, or you, you're there every time it comes on, you may need to get rid of that. You may need to stop watching TV because mm -hmm. that's going to stir up fear. That's going to stir up paranoia and anxiety. And if you are a professed believer, but you're like, no, I just have to be in a no, listen, 
The Spirit of God says he doesn't do anything in the earth except he first reveals it to his sons. Yes. And so whatever it is that the Lord wants you to be and to know of, he will reveal it to you. Mm -hmm. But for you to just open yourself up to it and then you wonder why you're struggling with unbelief. Mm -hmm. You wonder why you're struggling with not taking the, the vaccine and having to wear a mask, but you're a professed believer. It's because mm -hmm. you're governed by fear because of yeah. what you open yourself to. Yes. And so your thoughts are affecting you. Your thoughts have convinced you God can't save me. God can't defend me. God can't protect me. And so whatever it is for you, whatever that thing is for you, you have to be di diligent enough and wise enough to remove that thing from you. Right. If it's relationship, the company that you keep, if this person is going to open you up to a, a part of you, the old you, that you really don't want to associate with, then you may need to go from around that person. Mm -hmm. You may need to cut off communication with certain people. If you know that this person, when they call you, they're going to gossip. Yeah. They're going to tell you what's going on in Ukraine and with Russia, and you really don't need to hear that because you're trying to keep your mind sanctified and, and yes. on the Lord and, like you said, on the things that are good and love, lovely and true, on, on, on all of those good things, then you're going to have to, you're going to, have to make some decisions. As to eliminate yourself from being exposed because the enemy, he's already going to try and put thoughts in your mind. Right. And so to open yourself up to greater things, greater thoughts by what you're watching and who you're interacting with, it's it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And so you you got to be willing to cast down some things. You got to be willing to address some things. You got to be willing to address some thoughts. And guess what? It doesn't mean that they're, that they're not going to come back. They're going to come back. But you have to keep the momentum. You got to put forth the effort. And you got to address it and, and retain the mind of Christ. Yes. That's the only thing that's going to sustain us in these last days. It's going to get worse. The days are getting darker. Yes. And then we can't control yes. our thoughts now. If we are being controlled from our thoughts, meaning you have this thought and you just speak it out. Or you move off an of impulse. Or you make mm. an impulsive decision. If you are a person, you are easily controlled by your thoughts, you're going to have a hard time in the days ahead. Right. And so we need to get to a place where we are controlling our minds. We, we, are, we have the power to be in control. Our thoughts shouldn't be controlling us. No, you don't control me. I control you. You are subject to me. I am not subject to you. Right. And so the days are going to get darker. And we need, to, we need to walk in the power that the Lord has given us concerning our minds, concerning our thoughts. Right. One of the things I want to point out too as well, in that 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse, it, it starts off at, um, well, not the beginning of the chapter, but it starts off in that verse. Uh, for our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Now, know this, what Paul said in Romans. He said, a carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. So, you think if you love the pleasures of this life in your mind, but yet there is a form of hypocrisy there, and you, you yourself know it, but don't even care that nobody else don't know it, but God knows it because he searches your reins, the reins of the hearts and minds and to get everyone according to their works. If you are loving or partaking in the carnality, you know that your, no, do know this, that your mind is carnal and is empty against God. And then there's also that James verse, friendship with the world is empty against God's world as well. So evil communication corrupts good manners. With my wife, that was that's the scripture made me, my wife made me think of. Of you may have to cut some folks off or unfollow some people because if you stay in agreement of or following, you are agreeing. You're you're keeping communication with evil doers or wicked people that are carnal, and that's how the defilement begins with them. And one of the things is that's an encouragement. It's in Colossians that uh, let the words of Christ. Dwelling you richly. Jesus is the new covenant. Jesus, he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Follow him. Follow him. Obey what Christ the Lord says. God will never fail you because he said it. The Father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus pleases the Father. Apart from Christ, we cannot please the Father because it is, it is impossible but with God, all things are possible. Know that. As the, he says this, this in John 15. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So make your calling and election sure. Examine yourself. Be transparent with God. Acknowledge, Lord. 
I have thought this is this the will concern is this your will concerning this matter right here or I know I offended this person and I know I've offended you. Be honest with God. Confess it. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and ask for the strength and obedience to obey him. In Jesus' name. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.